Hey everyone, welcome. I'm Naomi and today I have a yoga practice to help you feel more confident and more capable in Pinchamayarasana, also known as forearm stand. So forearm stand is probably my very favorite way to play upside down. But I also think that it can be a really tricky inversion for a lot of people. So you need not only shoulder mobility in this pose, but a lot of shoulder strength. And you need a very specific type of shoulder mobility and shoulder strength because of the position that your arms are in. So in some ways it requires both a back bend and an arm balance kind of at the same time. So what we're gonna focus on today is some very simple ways that you can target your shoulders to create more mobility and strength, to target your biceps, because this is actually a pose that uses your biceps, which is sort of exciting, because there aren't a lot of poses in yoga that use your biceps, so yay, all right? So we're gonna do some poses that will target your biceps, some poses that will help you create more movement in your upper back, but also create more strength and steadiness so that you feel more confident when you go into forearm stand. I'm also going to show you a few ways that you can practice forearm stand, whether you're doing it at the wall or in the middle of the room, so that you start to feel a little bit steadier in your foundation and so that you can access your muscles when you need them, exactly how you need them to work. So, sound good? Sound like something you want to do? Excellent. So you will need for today a block and a chair or something that you can put your upper body on. So you don't necessarily need like folding chair like I have. You could use your couch. You could use a table. You don't have to be like really high off the ground or really low to the ground. You just need something that you can put your elbows on basically. Okay, so let's get started and we're gonna get started with the block. So grab your block and you can do this standing if you like. I'm actually gonna do it kneeling just because it feels, I like to do it better kneeling. Um, but also because you can see my entire body in the frame this way. Whereas if I stand up, you might not be able to see my arms as well. So just a little, little filming thing that's going on here. All right, so block in between my hands. Now the block, you wanna hold on so the block is at its widest, okay? So because it's gonna pass over your head, if it's really narrow, it's gonna be harder. The, also when the block is at its widest, it's closest to the width of your shoulders. Now if you have broader shoulders, this is gonna be a little bit narrow for you, that's okay. <laughs> um, it's not ideal, but it's gonna be fine. All right, so squeeze the block between your two hands. When you do, you should feel your biceps begin to wake up, your upper arms fire up, that's great. Now bend your elbows and they'll wake up even more. Okay, from here, lift your elbows straight up so that the block goes behind you. So you're not lifting your arms up, think you're moving your elbows forward and up like you're creating a circle. Then take the block down, towards your neck without changing where your head is. Lift the block back up and then take your elbows forward again and now re-extend your arms straight. So you're not straightening your arms above your head, only out in front of you. Bend your elbows. Lift your elbows straight up, keep squeezing that block. Take the block straight down, goes right behind your head. Lift the block back up, elbows forward, and then re-extend your arms. So two more times like that. Bend your elbows, lift the block up, the elbows up rather. Take the block behind your head, keep squeezing the block. Lift your hands back up slightly, elbows go forward again, and then re-extend your arms. Last time, bend your elbows, lift your elbows up. Okay, block goes behind your head, take the block down as far as it'll go. Keep squeezing the block as you lift your hands back up, elbows go forward, re-extend the block and then put it down and shake it out because you should have felt a lot of work particularly in your biceps which is actually really exciting okay um your biceps or your elbows rather flex your biceps so when your elbows are bent you're going to feel your biceps engage more and in forearm stand and pincha mayarasana right you are definitely bending your elbows so you want your biceps to work in the same way in Pinchamayarasana, in forearm stand, your elbows are roughly in line with your head. Now, if you notice what happens, and I'll turn forward when I do this, when I'm not holding a block, when my elbows go up, my hands narrow in. If I'm holding onto the block though, I'll show from the front, my hands stay the same width. And that's why it's really good for training my shoulder joints to sort of stay stable and in place, even as my arms are moving. Okay, so that's why you do that one, is to train your shoulder joint and to start working on your biceps. Okay, now we're gonna add to that a little bit. So the next thing that you're gonna do does use the chair. And you're gonna use the block as well. 
So I'm going to take the chair and turn it around so you can see from the side. And we're going to start without blocks and then add the blocks. Okay. So the first thing that you're going to do is just lean onto the chair so that your elbows are on the chair. Now it's not super comfortable. Your butt is back, feet are slightly further back than your hips, and your torso should be roughly parallel to the floor, depending on the size of your chair or the table or wherever you are. If you're on your bed and your bed is lower to the ground, you might be on your knees, okay? Now, I'm gonna scoot in just a little bit so my elbows are past the edge of the chair. Palms together, okay, squeeze your palms together, and then lift your hands up. As you do, send your chest toward the floor. Now what you might notice is that it's not just your chest going down, but like the middle of your back. So fluff up your back ribs a little bit, take your hands a little further back. Should feel like a pretty significant stretch through your triceps. Your biceps are working, but here your triceps are getting a stretch. And then take your arms forward again. So just two more times like that. Bend your elbows, try not to drop through your rib cage, stay lifted as your hands go back and then re-extend. One more time, elbows bend, hands go behind your head for a big stretch for your upper arms, and then extend forward. Okay, now grab your block, and it's gonna feel like the same thing, only this time you're keeping your elbows more static, right? You're not moving your elbows as much, and you're really just moving through your shoulder joint, okay? So block goes between your hands. Like I said, it's not necessarily super comfortable. Like I'm getting red on my upper arms. You could put a blanket there if you want a little bit more comfort. Um, so it's not super comfortable if you've got like a hard chair, just as a, I'm sorry, okay? But take your upper arms right above your elbows to the chair. Block straight out in front of you, squeeze the block, okay? Then bend your elbows. Take the block behind your head as far as it'll go. and then go forward again, as far as you can. And it doesn't feel super great for me to stretch my arms all the way straight because of the pressure on the chair. So I'm not going all the way there, but I'm going part of the way. Bend your elbows, block goes behind. Try not to sink through your middle ribs, stay lifted. Block goes behind, and then forward, as far as you can go. Two more like that, come in, and out, come in, and extend out. And step in and come on up, put the block aside for now. So really similar to what you did kneeling, only instead of moving your entire shoulder joint, you're really just isolating and trying to get a little bit deeper in, okay? So you're keeping it a little bit more stable while you move the block, okay? You are done with the chair. And now, just to shake it up a little bit or change it up a little bit, interlace your fingers behind your back. Now, if it doesn't feel awesome to interlace your fingers behind your back, you could always do this with a belt or a scarf or even just put your hands at your hips. Okay, just a little. So even with my hands at my hips, if I'm working my shoulders, I can feel it. Okay, if I interlace my fingers, not much changes. Not much changes. Okay, I get a little bit more of a squeeze in my shoulders, but other than that, not much changes. And then let it go. Shake it out. Okay? Now, come on down to your forearms. Come on down to your forearms. Place your forearms on the floor. Scoot your knees back slightly. Okay, bring your palms together. Same idea as what you did on the chair. Lift your hands up. Your arms are going to angle back slightly, so you're more on the diagonal with your upper body. So you can send your chest down. And you're trying to get that same stretch through your upper back that you did before. So I'm digging through my elbows, pulling back, and at the same time, taking my hands further overhead maybe, and my chest down. Okay, now that has a lot to do with the length of your upper arms, a lot to do with the mobility in your shoulders. That's the idea, chest down. So you might be nose to the floor like I am, head to the floor, that's fine. Now release your hands, shift forward, bring your forearms to the ground. Okay, scoot your knees in slightly. Squeeze your forearms toward one another, okay? And then keeping that, send your chest toward the floor. So at this point, you should have a little bit more reference for chest down. 
Okay, lift your knees up, and now you're in dolphin. And this is essentially, it's like your, your prep pose for forearm stand, because here you are pressing down through your forearms, right? Here you are doing forearm stand with your feet on the ground. So one of the things that you need to get really good at is holding forearm stand. So lower your knees down, and I want you to go back to that pose that you were just doing. So rock back on your elbows, palms together, hands go up. So you're more at an angle. Draw your elbows back so you're stabilizing your shoulder joint. And then send your chest toward the floor. Head toward the floor. Then shift forward again, plant your hands, push down through your palms, scoot your knees in slightly. Okay, keep that action, lift your knees up. Walk your feet in. And hold. Now, the idea here is you want your gaze to be sort of at the midpoint of your forearms. You don't want to look back towards your feet, and your knees can be bent, by the way. So you don't want to look back towards your feet, and you don't want to look all the way ahead of your hands. You're looking down. Sort of at that point in between your two forearms, not quite up towards your thumbs, not back towards your toes, straight down. Take a full breath in, full breath out. Now the theory is if you can hold this for about a minute, probably you're ready to lift your legs up. You know, probably you have enough strength. Okay, you can also do this by counting breaths. You can count to five and then take your knees down. You can count to 10 and take your knees down. You can count to 20 and take your knees down, which is a very, very, very long time. <laughs> so here, I've been holding you here for almost a minute. We're about to take the knees down. Take a full breath in, full breath out, knees down. Sit back on your heels and just roll your shoulders a little bit because it's a lot. Okay, it is absolutely a lot. Now, what I love about doing dolphin pose in that way is that it's just a very clear way to build strength. Very, very clear way to build strength. Um, and more than strength, it's building endurance. Uh, and when you're doing inversions, you actually want endurance, right? You want your foundation to have endurance. It's not just about having stability or strength. It's about being able to endure. Because when you are going to balance and taking one leg up and then the other, when you're going to balance in that way, if you can't hold yourself for a good length of time on your forearms, and you can't like go back and forth as you're trying to figure it out. Here, I'll show you what I mean, right? Um, while you take a break, while your shoulders take a break, if I'm going up into forearm stand, a lot of it is like this place of balance where I'm like, oh, am I there yet? Am I there yet? And I have to be able to endure in my foundation. If I can endure in my foundation, then I can take my legs up. However, if my foundation is really wobbly and I can't hold dolphin <laughs> for a good length of time, then there's no way that I'm going to be able to take my legs up, whether it's the middle of the room or at the wall. Okay, so practice those dolphin holds so that you have a little bit more um, capacity to hold yourself in dolphin and then go for your forearm stand. Okay, so that's another good landmark. Okay, now another thing that you can do is there are two ways to do dolphin push ups. Okay, one of them is on your knees or in dog. So place your hands as wide apart as your shoulders. Scoot your knees back slightly so your arms are at an angle. So you're not directly shoulder over wrist because what you're gonna do from here is lower your elbows down and lift them back up. Elbows down, back up. Elbows down, back up. Elbows down. <laughs> and back up, and these are push-ups. Now, doing them with your knees down is a lot easier than doing them with your knees lifted. And the idea here, if you're lowering down from dog and coming back up, is you wanna be able to do it all at the same time. Now, there are benefits to doing it one and then the other. Okay, it's more mobility. Here, it's about stability. So you wanna lower your forearms down, and then go back up. Okay, forearms down, and back up. Now, suggestion. If you're first doing it, if you've never done this in dog before, and it felt a little bit challenging in table, only lower as far down as you think you can push back up. Only as far down as you can push back up. <laughs> all right? Because if you get all the way down and you're like, oh my God, I can't get back up, then you're missing the point of what you need for push-ups. 
But if you can get all the way down to the floor and then you can push, you're getting into your biceps again as well and also into your forearms. You're creating strength there. Okay, so those are that's one version of dolphin push-ups. Okay, the second version of dolphin push-ups involves interlacing your fingers. Okay? So when you're interlacing your fingers, you want to tuck that bottommost pinky finger in, just like you would for a headstand, and you want the heel of your hands to be together, so it's not a basket, it's connected. Now once you have that fist, and you can do this in table first, okay, knees are down, you shift forward, and shift back. Shift forward, and shift back. Shift forward, shift back, shift forward, shift back. And you can do this also with your knees up, okay, in dolphin. Shift forward so your head goes past your hands and back. Shift forward and back. Keep squeezing your hands as you push down with your fist and back. Two more. Shift forward and back. Last one. Shift forward and back. And then take your knees down and rest. <laughs> because that too, that's a lot, right? It's a lot of strength. And so I also just sort of want to note that I'm giving you these as ways to build strength for, for a forearm stand. If you do all of these and then try to do forearm stand, you might be tired, particularly the first time out. Okay, so these are more like conditioning exercises to get you ready for it as opposed to like do all of these and then try forearm stand. Okay, use these as a way to build strength, right? Um, and if you are feeling strong at the end of this practice, by all means, try forearm stand. If you're not, if you're still feeling like, oh my God, my arms are like jelly, don't try forearm stand. Okay, and I'm giving you a little bit of a break here before <laughs> we go into the next thing so that you're really, really clear on that, okay? Now, the next thing that you want to test is whether or not you can take a leg up the way away from the floor in dolphin. Now, a really great place to play there is to work with a block. So, a block is going to give you more access to your muscles, right? It's not gonna give you as much foundation, but it's gonna help you access your biceps so that you feel stronger. So if you grab the block, there are a couple of different ways to hold it, but I like holding on to the outside and wrapping my fingers around, okay? Now, like I said, if, if this is more narrow than your shoulders are, it might feel a little tight in your forearm stand and in your dolphin. Um, but that's not terrible, okay? If you're really, really broad, you could put two blocks together and sort of play with it that way. But this is going to be pretty standard for um, most women who practice forearm stand in general, not, not as a rule. Okay, now if I squeeze the block, I feel my biceps working. I can push down with my hands, down with the block, walk in, then one leg up. And if I haven't like collapsed down onto the block, good. I've got to push down as I lift my leg. And then left leg goes down, right leg goes up, depending on which leg was up first. And again, if I sink down and if I'm like losing it, that tells me that that's where I need to work. Okay, you can come down if your leg is still lifted and just rest for a sec, okay? So if when I do that, if I start to collapse and I can't hold myself up in my core and I can't keep my head from going down onto the block, that's telling me that that's where I need to build strength. Okay, that's telling me that's where I need to build strength. However, if I can hold that with my leg lifted, then I'm doing pretty well, right? And that tells me that I'm now ready to try forearm stand. Now you can try forearm stand at the wall, you can try it away from the wall. If you want to access even more power, Right? You, can, you can interlace your fingers and try that way. This is going to give you even more access to your muscles than the block. Right, The block is just sort of like a good step and it allows you to retain some of your foundation. When you interlace your fingers, it helps you squeeze your biceps even more, but you lose part of the foundation that you have when your hands are down on the ground. Okay, So another way to practice is trying with that squeeze, right? with your fingers interlaced, Okay, squeeze, knees up, push down, and take one leg up. Okay, and again, so long as you don't collapse down onto your hands, that's probably telling you, hey, that's a good place. That is, I'm maybe ready for forearm stand. Now, whether you're at the wall or not, a really good way to start with forearm stand is using that block for support. So if I'm in the middle of the room, I can use the block to just help 
keep some of the foundation while accessing the muscles of my upper body, accessing my shoulders, accessing my biceps. Because I can still push down as I take one leg up, give a few hops, and maybe sort of find that balance. Okay? If you're at a wall, it's the same thing. Okay? If you're at a wall, it's the same idea. And I'm showing away from the wall just so you can sort of see that play back and forth. If you are doing this at a wall, you want to be fingertips at the wall. Okay, now the reason that you want to be fingertips at the wall is that you're already that distance away from the wall. Okay, so if I am fingertips at the wall, it means when I go up and kick up, the wall is right there. Now the thing to watch out for is that when I'm at the wall, the tendency is to dump a lot into the low back, which does not feel good. So when you're at the wall, if you're going to be at the wall, the idea is be at the wall and push up. So you can keep one foot at the wall, knee bent, and push up with your other leg. Okay? Now, if you were doing this in the middle of the room, the way that I learned in the middle of the room was using a block. It just made my life a ton easier because I could use the block like I just showed you. Okay? But once you start to feel stronger and you can start to play, so much of it is about trying to find that balance. So instead of trying to go straight up and down, you're aiming for a V. Okay? So, with or without a block, and I'll show without the block, it's the same idea of what you've done. I'm aiming for a V. So my leg is going to go over my head. And that's why that shift forward, when you do those push-ups where you're shifting forward, that's where those come into play. Okay, because you have to be able to go to that place where you're shifting forward and then push back up and maintain and hold. All right. So. So hopefully that's given you some good. Just some good tools to add to your toolbox for practicing forearm stand. Hopefully it's given you some insight not only into some really good warm-ups for forearm stand, but how to start practicing at the wall or in the middle of the room when you're feeling ready, um, and to do it with the support that you need. So let me know what you think of this video in the comments below. I would love to hear your pinch of progress uh, so that I know how you are going in your upside down adventures. If you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments below. And as always, I'm so grateful that you are practicing with me. Thanks for hanging out with me on the mat. If you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and subscribe using that button in the bottom, the bottom right corner, bottom right corner, um, so that you can get videos like this every single week delivered directly to your inbox totally for free. So see you on the mat next time. Bye.